Good evening, all the joinees. Uh, hi, this is Ansu. I welcome you all to the webinar conducted by Engine Research. We will be beginning shortly. By the time others join in, let's have a look at today's topic. So today we'll be discussing on the various methods of onboarding clients onto the platform. And also we'll be going forward with a portfolio analytics as well. So we will also be looking at how you can create a family portfolio. Let's say you have maybe four members of your family on onboarded onto the platform. So how you can create a family portfolio and the ways of generating reports for these family portfolio can also be seen. Next, on a portfolio level, we will be seeing how you can compare the performance of your portfolio with that of the benchmark. And finally, we will be looking at the positions overlap tab. Maybe you can see that uh, there are funds which have common overlaps, common stocks. So how you can maybe change those funds depending on its contribution, individual contribution of those funds towards the portfolio. And finally, the platform would be open for a Q&A session. You can either unmute yourself or write down your query in the chat box. So let us begin. So this is our engine markets terminal, wherein the landing page is the markets tab. Now for our topic related webinar, I move to the clients tab. So in this client section, there is an online integration method called as the RTA connection method. So uh, all the clients that are registered through your ARN number would get onboarded onto the platform. And our platform also provides multiple ARN onboarding towards uh, the system. Uh, once the onboarding is done, we, we set in certain filters and forwards on your registered mail ID. And we retrieve data from CAMS WBR4 and CARV MFSD203. Now, uh, we'll just have a look at this uh, RTA connection dashboard. So here, based on the ARN that you select, you can see in the AUM under that specific ARN. So as of now, in this ARN, you can see 48.60 uh, 48 crore is the total AUM. And the total number of clients that are registered under that respective ARN can also be seen. Once the onboarding is done, you will be able to see all your clients' name right here on the left-hand side. Then you also have an option to search in any specific fund uh, let's say you want to know how many clients have held onto a specific fund. So for that also, we have an option right here. You see client holding search. So maybe you need to have the name of that specific fund or the ISIN code of that specific fund. Let's say uh, I want to see which all clients have invested into DSP mid-cap funds. So you see DSP mid-cap shows up and a total of 47 clients have DSP mid-cap fund in their portfolio. Now, once I just click on that, you can see in the list of all the clients that have DSP mid-cap funds in their portfolio. You can see in three columns next to the name of the clients. The first column is basically the AUM, which shows the total AUM of your client. So here the client, which is Pranav Dalal, has an AUM of 98 lakhs. And out of this, the next two columns shows the holding of that specific fund in terms of rupees as well as in terms of percentage. So Pranav Dalal has invested 17.73 lakhs into the DSP mid-cap fund and it comes to a total of 17% holding in the entire portfolio. That can be seen across all the clients. Now, not only we capture uh, the holdings of uh, equity funds, which all clients have held into specific equity fund, you can also look for debt funds. Let's say uh, I input HDFC hybrid fund. And I just want to see which all clients have invested into that specific fund. So here you see HDFC debt fund and five clients have invested or have that specific fund in their portfolio. I'll just click on that. And here the meaning remains exactly the same. The AUM column shows the total AUM of that specific client. So Pavan Bakshi has an AUM of 1.75 crore out of which 75 lakh is put into HDFC hybrid fund. That information can be seen. Then next to that, you can see in the top five mutual fund exposures in this specific ARN that you're seeing. Now, any of the bar graph that you click on, you can see in the clients that hold onto that specific fund. So I just click on this highest, the topmost bar graph, which is ICICI Proof Value Discovery Fund. You can see the list of all the clients that have this specific fund in their portfolio. Any of the bar graph that you click on, you can see in list of all the clients. 
Next is the top asset class. Based on this specific investments that have been made for the clients, you can see be, uh, you can see the investment that has been made into equity, hybrid, as well as debt. Now you can see the highest investment has been made into equity sector, which is 32.68 crore. And as I mentioned, we retrieve data from CAMF WBR4 and CARV MFSD203. And you can also view how frequently the data is updated. Next to the names of that specific uh, da CAMS data, you can see received. So here wherein it is written, no update yet, you will be able to see a specific date on which the data gets updated on your login or your ARN. And you can also have a consolidated view of your ARN. Let's say you have multiple onboard, multiple ARN onboarded onto the platform. You can also have a consolidated view for the same. So I'll just click on this consolidated view and you can see for all the ARN, a consolidated view, basically a dashboard can be seen, which shows 101 crore is the AUM on a consolidated view. Now, this was the first method of onboarding client onto the platform, which was RTA connection, wherein integration happens on the backend. Next method is the manual data method. In the client tab itself, the next method is the manual data method. Here, you have an option to onboard the ECAS file of your prospective clients or your existing clients as well. So for that, the option is right here. Under the launch tools, you can see in the statement analyzer. Once I click on this, a new tab opens up, wherein you have an option to onboard the ECAS files of your clients, either from NSDL, CDSL, or CAMS. And this data needs to be in a PDF format. So I'll just click on this choose file. You just select that respective specific uh, folder. You input a password for that specific file and you just click on check file. Once that has been done, you can see a prompt stating that this is a recognized file type. Now there is a no re compulsory requirement to input a label. If you wish to, you can input a label. If not, you just click on process and save file. Once this processing has been done, your client name would appear right here on the right hand side. So here, this was the client that I had just now uploaded using its ECAS file. Now, if you just want to have a look what all are the holdings under this specific portfolio, ECAS upload, you can see the fund holdings as well as the stock holdings, if any, would show up. Once the uploading has been done on this statement analyzer tab, you need to go back to the engine markets platform. In this client's tab itself, that in the manual data itself, you just click on add client from statement analyzer. So the client that I had onboarded using the ECAS file would appear right here as well. Now, next to the name of the client, there is a plus icon. I'll just click on this. And this was the client that I had onboarded using the ECAS file. Now you can go forward with a detailed portfolio analytics for this as well. So here you can see in the current holdings of this portfolio. So we basically capture the current holdings and once I just click on run analytics, you can go forward with a detailed portfolio analytics as well. So this was the two methods and in the manual data as well, there is another method of onboarding client, which is add client manually, wherein all the input needs to be given manually. So let's say I input a client detail. Let's say I input the name as Rashi Mehra. And I click on add client. And here you have an option to search in the name of any fund or any stock. Let's say I search in the name of a fund of maybe ICICI Blue Chip. I select this fund. Maybe Nippon Small Cap. and an access mid cap. Now I have loaded in these three funds. You can also load in any stock. So you will be able to see in their latest nav as of 29th Feb is what you can see the latest nav. Now here, there are two columns, units as well as current value. 
and you need to input either of these two columns and the other column will get automatically captured. Let's say here I input a unit of maybe 1000 and once I click outside, you see the current value has been automatically captured. Now in a similar manner, if I input the current value, you will be able to see that the units are automatically captured. So once you input those details, you just click on done. And you see, this was the client that I had onboarded using a manual uh, data upload method. And once you click on run analytics, you can go forward with a portfolio analytics as well. Now, as we mentioned that how you can create a family portfolio uh, once they have been onboarded, that option is also available. Let's say I want to create a family portfolio for Mehra family. So maybe I'll just, a minute, I'll just type in the name. And you see there are these five, these five people come under the Mehra family. So the option is you see load multiple clients. I'll just tick on this box. And once that has been done next to the name of these uh, specific people, you can see in there is also a checkbox. So these all come under the Mehra family. So I'll just click on this checkbox individually. So I've clicked on this four checkbox and they have come under this specific family name and I input a family name, let's say I input Mehra family. I give in a family name and I click on done. So you see we have created in a family portfolio. So the names of that specific family member show up right here and all the components of those portfolio show up. Then you just click on run analytics and you can go forward with a detailed portfolio analytics. So the portfolio analytics remains exactly the same, even if you're in a client section or in the portfolio section, irrespective of whether it is an individual portfolio or if it is a family portfolio. Now the reporting options on portfolio level are basically PPT that gets generated. So here you can see in a PPT that gets generated on your end. So this is basically the Mehra family PPT that you see. So this shows in the asset allocation, which shows the components of your portfolio, the asset allocation for your portfolio. And these PPTs are editable. You can insert in multiple slides that you want. And this can be shared across to your clients as well. And the second reporting option is basically a PDF that gets generated. A four page of PDF would get generated and you can share this across to your client also having your watermark as well. So here you can see uh, engine research has been written at the end, at the back. Once you get onboarded, your company name would be shown. So this is a PDF that would get generated. And the next sharing option is basically a share link that gets generated. So here you have an also option to hide in the engine fund score. Maybe you do not wish to show this fund score to your client. You can just click on this checkbox and you can just click on create. Once you do that, the engine fund score would, uh, would not appear on the client link or the share link that you select, want to share with your client. So I've just copied this link and I'll just open this in a new tab. So all the tabs that were visible to you will also be visible to your client as well. Now, as I mentioned, the fund score won't be visible. You'll see that there is no fund score in this tab, in the share link that I had opened just now. While on the platform, you'll be able to see the fund score. So this is basically a new feature that we have introduced to remove the fund score from the share link. Now, these were the reporting options that you can see on a portfolio level.
Now, these were the two methods of onboarding clients in the client section, which was basically the RTE connection method and the manual data method. We also have another onboarding method in the portfolio section. Let's say uh, you just have access to the ISIN numbers of your client's portfolio and maybe the respective units. So there is an option uh, where is, wherein we have an ISIN upload. So in the portfolio section, on top, you'll be able to see a plus icon. Once I click on this, there is an option called as load ISIN from Excel. Once I click on this, you see a gray in this gray section, you need to input two columns. The first column need to be the ISIN number. And in the second column, you need to input either the percentage or the amount or the total number of units or shares. So for example, I have this Excel sheet ready with me. So you can see in the ISIN numbers have been input and the corresponding percent can be taken in, units can be taken in as well as amount. Either of these three can be input in that gray section. Let's say I just take in the ISIN number along with the percentage. So I have copied this ISIN number with its percentage. I insert this in this gray section. Once I insert this, I need to validate what has been taken in this second column, read holding, holdings column. Basically, I need to validate stating that I have taken units in the second column. I have taken percentage in the second column and I'll just click on validate input. Once that has been done, based on the ISIN number, you can see in the funds have been picked up along with their respective percentage. Now, the next step would be giving in a name to this portfolio. Let's say I input a name. And then you can select in the folder into which you want to save this uh, specific portfolio. Then if you wish to save this portfolio onto your platform, you need to click on create. If you do not click on create and you go forward with run, you will be able to see a portfolio analytics, but you won't be able to save this portfolio onto the platform. So the first step has to be clicking on create. Now the portfolio has been saved onto the platform and I'll just click on run. Now here you can see that this is an nine item portfolio, which I had uploaded using the ISIN number and its respective weightage. You can see in the components that form a part of my portfolio and next to the name of the component, you can see its weightage in my portfolio as well. Next to that, you have an option called as the start date and the end date. You can change in these start dates as well as the end date. You can see in written as change. Once I'll just click on this and let's say you want an analysis from five years ago. So I'll just click on five years ago. And as of now, the analysis that you can see is from the start date, which is 26th Feb 2019 up until the last trading day, which was yesterday's date. Next to that, you can see in a benchmark, which is taken as reference index three. Now, what does reference index three stand for? I'll just click in this gray section, search reference indices. Reference index three is basically 80% Nifty TRI and 20% Cecil bond. Now, this has been taken up based on the asset allocation. Now, the platform automatically benchmarks the portfolio against a reference index based on its asset allocation. Now let's have a look at its asset allocation. This basically says that the equation is basically 62% equity and 18% debt. My portfolio comp uh, composition has 62% equity and 18% debt. So based on this asset allocation, the platform automatically benchmarks the portfolio against the reference index. Now there is no hard and fast rule to go forward with this specific reference index that has been given in by the platform. You can select in any other reference index that you wish to select for. And you can also select in benchmarks from TRI indices, NSE, BSE, as well as World. Those options are also available. And you can also at the same time create in your own custom benchmark. So I just click on this custom and there is an option called as manage custom indices. I'll just click on this. And from this drop down of indices that you see, you have an option to select multiple index. Let's say I select maybe Nifty 100 and maybe Nifty 200. 
So once these have been selected, you need to give in weightage to each of this index. Let's say I give 50% to Nifty 50 and 25-25 to Nifty 100 and Nifty 200. Once this has been 100% allocated, you just give in a custom index name and you click on save custom index. Now this has gotten saved onto the platform. So I'll just come onto this custom, search your custom indices, this gray section, I'll just click. So this was the custom index that I had created just now. So you can see the performance of your portfolio against the index that you create. That option is also available. So I changed this index to the initial index, which was reference index three. Now we move on to the performance chart. So this tab basically lets you know how your portfolio has performed in comparison to the benchmark. So here you can see there is a blue line which shows in the performance of your portfolio and the black line shows in the performance of your benchmark. And you can see there has been an outperformance from the maybe second half of 2020 that can also be seen in this blue peaks that you see on this line graph as well, which is below. And you can also see this in a numerical manner, which is basically you can see the cumulative return, the absolute return that was generated by your portfolio was to an extent of 128 percentage, which is higher than that of your benchmark. Your benchmark generated a cumulative return of 104. Now, in order to generate this return, what was the risk or the volatility that was undertaken by your portfolio? So your portfolio took a risk of 11 percentage, while your benchmark took a risk of 15 percentage. So you can say your portfolio generated a better level of return at a lower level of risk in this time duration of five years when you compare it to that of the benchmark. And you can also see that in terms of its sharp ratio as well, which is basically the risk adjusted return. So the sharp ratio is higher for your portfolio, which is 0.88 percentage when you compare it to that of the benchmark, which is 0.55 percentage. Next, we can see in the VAR, which is value at risk. So this basically lets you know what is the value of your portfolio that is at risk. At risk of what? At risk of losing. So here you can see 95 percent, 95 has been input. So this basically tells you that with a 95% confidence interval, if history were to repeat itself, your portfolio would go down by a total of 16%, while at the same time, the benchmark would go down by a total of 20% in this time duration of five years. Now, if I just say this in simple words, if you invest 100 rupees into both this portfolio as well as the benchmark, the capital erosion for your portfolio would be 16 rupees, while the capital erosion for your benchmark would be 20 rupees. Now, you can see historical VAR as well as implied VAR. So the calculation for these VAR remains the same. The only difference is the basis of calculation. Historical VAR is calculated based on the returns, historical returns, while implied VAR is calculated based on the volatility historical volatility. Next, you can see in the cumulative excess on benchmark, which is basically alpha, a positive alpha of 24.05 percentage can be seen basically because there has been an outperformance by your portfolio against that of the benchmark in the time duration of five years. Now, next we come to the up capture ratio and the down capture ratio. So the up capture ratio lets you know how quickly your portfolio was able to catch up with the benchmark when the benchmark was in a bull run. So next to the percentage, which is basically 91 has been input. Next to that, you can see in an I button. Once I click on this, you can see that in the up capture ratio, we consider only those months wherein the benchmark has generated a positive return, irrespective of whether your portfolio has generated a positive or a negative return. Now, maybe if we just look at April 2019, 
you can see the benchmark generated a positive return of 0.82. But at the same time, the portfolio generated a negative return of minus 0.18. And here as well, you can see March, April and May has been captured. And after that, directly September as a month has been captured. Basically, because the months which were in between May and September were such months wherein the benchmark generated a negative return. And that is the reason those would be captured in the down capture ratio calculation. So once we consider all these months wherein the benchmark generated a positive return and correspondingly the returns that has been generated by the portfolio, we do a cumulation of all these returns. So you can see the portfolio return cumulation comes to 44 while the benchmark return cumulation comes to 48. Now the formula for calculating the up capture ratio is basically dividing the returns of portfolio with that of the benchmark. And we say a higher up capture ratio, better is the performance of the portfolio against that of the benchmark. And by higher, I mean, if it is higher than 100, better is the performance of the portfolio against that of the benchmark. Now, complete similar or opposite is the down capture ratio, wherein uh, this lets you know how resilient was your portfolio when the benchmark was in a bear run. Now, once I just click on this I button, here, we consider only those months wherein the benchmark generated a negative return, irrespective of whether your portfolio generated a positive return or a negative return. Now, if we focus on this first month, which is February 2019, you see the benchmark return was a negative 0.34 percentage, while the portfolio return was a positive 0.22 percentage and in the up capture ratio we had seen that after may the next month which was considered was september so you can see the remaining months have been input right here basically because the benchmark generated a negative return here as well once we consider all those months wherein the benchmark has generated a negative return and corresponding to them the portfolio returns have also been mentioned and we just accumulate these returns for both the portfolio as well as the benchmark. And the formula for calculating the down capture ratio is also the same. The returns of the portfolio is divided with that of the benchmark. And we say lower is the down capture ratio, better is the resilience of the, port of the portfolio when the benchmark is in a bear run. Next, you can see in the monthly charts, so the monthly charts here, you can see a number of 61 has been mentioned. So 61 basically tells you that there are in total 61 months in this time duration of five years, wherein 44 months, my portfolio gave in an up performance, while 17 months, my portfolio gave in a down performance in this time duration of five years. You can see in the average performance in all these months and you can also locate the best performance. Maybe if you just hover on this bar graph, you can see that in the month of April 2020, this portfolio gave in the best performance in this five year. And you can also see in the worst performance. So in the month of March 2020, negative 16.59 percentage worst performance across this five year time duration can be seen. Next, we move on to the overlap star. So this tab basically lets you know the common stock holdings between a pair of funds. Now this is basically on a portfolio level. So you can see the overlap between every two funds on a portfolio level. So uh, let's say I just hover my cursor on the 17 percentage. So you can see on the left hand side, Parag Pare gets highlighted and on top you'll see quantum ELSS will get highlighted. And once I click on the 17 percent, you can see in list of common stocks into which both these funds, Parag Parekh and Quantum ELSS have made investment. Their individual percentage of investment into those specific stocks have been mentioned and their minimum common overlap is mentioned in this third column, the overlap column. And accumulation of this overlap column comes to a total of 17 percentage. And this data can be downloaded in an Excel format as well. Uh, now we say that as the color on this uh, uh, matrix keeps on getting darker, the overlap between two funds uh, become higher. So we say that if it is within this dark green section, it is a safer overlap. The, the overlap between two funds is much more acceptable. Now here you can see that 41 has been mentioned. So 41 is basically uh, in a gray, 
darker section wherein you can see that the overlap is a bit higher between these two funds, which is basically SBI long-term equity and quantum ELSS tax saver fund. So uh, the steps is exactly the same. If you want to see which all are the common stocks into which these two funds have made investment. I just clicked on that 41 percentage. You can see in the list of the common stocks into which investment have been made. Now, maybe uh, you want to remove either of these two fund from your portfolio, basically because since they have uh, similar stocks, there are chances that if they have higher weightage in your portfolio, the price of uh, price of your portfolio can go down or can be reduced if the price of a single fund would go down. Now, you can take in a decision uh, to remove either of these two funds based on the contribution tab. So right here, you can see in the contribution tab. So we will be focusing on SBI long term as well as quantum ELSS. I move to this contribution tab. So this tab basically lets you know how each component of your portfolio has contributed to generate your portfolio return as a whole. So we had seen right here, your portfolio return was 128 percentage. Now the contribution tab tells you how each fund has contributed to generate that 128 percentage. So we were focusing on quant ELSS tax saver and SBI long-term equity fund. So based on this individual return that is there for these two funds, you can clearly take in a decision that a higher percentage, a higher individual return has been generated by quant ELSS tax saver fund. So maybe you can... So maybe you can take in a decision to keep in this fund in your portfolio and maybe remove this SBI long-term equity fund from your portfolio. Now, let's say I just want to remove this quant ELSS tax saver fund from the portfolio. So there is an option called as edit and save as. So from this section, I'll just remove this specific fund from the portfolio and I'll just click on save as new. So entirely a new portfolio would get saved from which that fund that you want to remove would be removed and you can save in a complete new portfolio. Maybe you can give in a new portfolio name to it. Uh, let's say. And I just click on create. Uh, all right, so I'll have to change in the start date. I just click on change and I'll click on five years ago. Now I go to the overlap tab. So you see that overlap of 41% has been removed, but there is another overlap of 43%, which is basically between Kotak Equity Arbitrage Fund and HDFC Large and Mid Cap Fund. Now, maybe you want to take a decision to keep either of these two funds. So again, I'll go back to the contributions tab. I'll just locate those two funds, which is basically HDFC large and mid cap fund and Kotak equity arbitrage. So based on their individual return in this time duration of five years, HDFC large and mid cap generated 174% of individual return, while Kotak equity arbitrage generated only 29% of return. So maybe you can take in a decision to keep this HDFC large and mid cap fund in your portfolio and maybe remove this Kotak arbitrage because they have a similar or a higher overlap percentage with each other. So the step remains exactly the same. You just click on edit and save as and you can remove that specific fund from your portfolio. Next, we move on to the drawdown step. So this tab basically lets you know how quickly your portfolio has recovered from a loss that has occurred. Here on a portfolio level, you can view in the top 10 drawdowns that has occurred. Now the highest drawdown will always show on the top. Here the highest drawdown was to an extent of 24% wherein the start price was 110 and this was as on 24th Jan 2020. And post this date of 24th Jan, your portfolio price started falling and it reached a price of 83 rupees. And that was as of 23rd March 2020. So maybe you can see a two months or a uh, one and a half month of period wherein the price kept on falling. 
Now, post this date of 23rd March, it took a total of 97 days for this portfolio to recover. And by recover, I mean it took a total of 97 days for this portfolio to cross this start price, 110. Only then we can say that your portfolio has completely recovered from the loss that has occurred. And that can be, and that happened on 5th August 2020. And you can view this movement of the uh, portfolio on this line graph as well. The white region shows in an up movement for your portfolio, while the gray region shows a down movement for this portfolio. And you can always zoom into this uh, portfolio to have a clearer picture for this. And next is the scenarios tab. So this tab basically lets you uh, lets you create your own customized scenario. Let's say you want to see how your portfolio performed in a budget scenario or an election scenario. So you just click on this add custom scenarios. You give in a name to this scenario. Maybe I want to input and see how my portfolio performed in the year 2020. So I have given it a name year to date 2023. I just input a start date of maybe 2023, Jan 1st and an end date. And I just click on save custom scenario. So you see the scenario has gotten saved right here. I just click on this scenario and you can see. This is the start date and the end date that I had input just now. You can see in the name of the scenario highlighting and the blue line basically shows the performance of your portfolio and the black line shows in the performance of the reference index, which is basically the benchmark currently, which we can see right here. And you can also see that there has been an outperformance by your portfolio when you compare it to that of the benchmark, which is an excess of 6.24 percentage has been created by your portfolio. Uh, all right, so that is it for the topic related webinar. If you have any query, you can uh, unmute yourself or you can write down in the chat box. Yeah, hi, uh, thanks uh, for the presentation. Uh, this is Ashok here. I just wanted to understand uh, if I get a cash statement and onboard a client and yes. uh, from his portfolio of uh, mutual funds, if yes. I want to understand what is the uh, stocks, uh, stocks uh, which are common, which you showed the correlation, that is one. Second mm -hmm. thing is, I wanted to know even at the sector level, uh, which are the sectors uh, he's concentrated based on the different schemes. Thirdly, is there any option to understand what is the overall market cap in terms of large cap, mid cap, small cap? Uh, across the entire portfolio, which has got updated, uh, which which is which is getting uploaded. Sure. Um. So answering the last two questions first, uh, let's go to asset allocation, please, Ansu. Um. In this tab, you will have a equity sectors uh, sub tab, the second last tab. Mm -hmm. Right. It will let you know which is um which are the top ten heavily allocated sectors in this particular portfolio. The moment you click on any particular bar graph, it will also show in the number of stocks or the names of the stocks that are held in that particular sector. So for an example, in this case, we are seeing that this portfolio that we have loaded um, is heavily um, bullish or rather invested into banks as a sector close to 10% of it is coming from banks as a sector. Right. Um, on the other hand, the lowest allocated sector happens to be insurance. Right? So this is how you can check on sector wise. Um, if you want to check this market cap wise, we have a concentration analysis. Um, that's right there beside overview. Uh, when you click on that, you will see equity market cap exposures from this portfolio. So right, um, if you consider um, you know equity portion of it um, only, then the split in the spy chart right will be uh, exactly matching 100 so large cap is 60 percent mid cap is 27 small cap is 11 percent now this is of the total equity exposure of the portfolio now if you want to see this as a consolidated portfolio picture considering all the other components as well meaning the debt um, and if there's any foreign equity or for that matter or any cash then you, you can use this as a percentage of total portfolio drop down um, it will of can course I get the sector here is, can i get the uh, say equity market cap is one and the sectors in in this in this uh, style in the sense that uh, 
my core Fine allocation chart. would be yeah in the, my core allocation would be probably large cap but then i have a pharma i have a uh, you know the sector wise uh, within this itself uh, is is there a possibility mm, uh, uh, so yeah we have a... hi uh, hi this arun yeah so that's that's not a bad idea uh, actually projector let's write this down so we can provide like a further drill down of each of the uh, market cap sectors um and uh, uh, each of the market caps and within that what sector um they have is that what you want yeah yeah so for example in the power and infrastructure if i have an exposure of 10% there in yeah. that in that uh, sector where am i concentrated whether large cap stocks or mid cap stocks or small cap stocks um i see so in the, in this case it will um in this particular chart it will show you um within large cap what sector exposures you have but if you want the other way around um then in equity sectors um we can um uh, the other tab we can yeah, um, so, so probably break that down by market cap as well yeah, probably you know in the equity tab itself i mean you're showing overall equity yeah uh, within that you're showing the various market caps yes. and can i get the sectors in this chart itself i mean how much how much would be sectors like pharma or it or banking or infra well, the well in this the chart. in this chart if you have a it stock if you have a particular sector stock which is mid cap and another sector stock which is uh, same sector stock which is also large cap so one of them will show up in the mid cap bucket while the other one will show up in the large cap bucket yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so that's possible. So that we we can provide that. Okay. 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 Hello. Hello. Yeah. And and uh, yes. uh, and and the other following up, uh, I had the statement other... analyzer. Right. Yeah. So basically, when you uh, upload a statement, um, basically your ECAS, NSL, CDSL, or CAS, there are clear uh, demarcations if it's um, uh, if it's stocks or mutual funds, right? Once you've onboarded that, then you can manually split it um, into two portfolios. One could be only stocks portfolio, one the other could be only mutual funds portfolio. But that has to be done manually once the entire consolidated statement is uploaded onto the platform. Right. So, 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 we have so a, there are only yeah. two uh, two ways where you can onboard, or I mean, three ways. One is input, and yes. uh, other one is that. Uh, so you cannot upload a random Excel sheet and uh, well, Excel. We showed right. Um, so Excel uh, upload we have uh, upload meaning it's a copy paste from Excel, right? ISI numbers. Uh, if you have those, uh, that, you can, if I don't, yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, if I just have the scheme names and the value yeah. of the portfolio, that cannot be uploaded. Um, scheme, names. Like scheme names will not work because scheme names are different all over the place. Amphis has something right. else, AMC has something. So we have to have, right. we have the code, then we, the ISIN code, then we can do it. Sure, sure. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Hello? Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes. Please tell me. Yeah, hi, this is Gaurav here. Uh, actually, I, I, have, I have a query regarding this compare portfolio. Uh, when we compare the client's portfolio with the index. Okay. I, yeah, so actually practically most of the times, you know, it doesn't make sense because uh, a lot of times, you know, there are many changes in the client's portfolio. Like, you know, uh, it, it starts from five years back, right? But uh, I have made some changes uh, in the client's portfolio uh, because it is actively managed, right? So we keep changing the funds, but it assumes that this same portfolio has been there for the last five years. So, uh, am I right in that sense? If it, it sometimes it doesn't serve the purpose of comparing the portfolio over the long term, actual portfolio performance. Sure. Um. So the the purpose of all portfolio analysis all over engine, be it in the single portfolio or the compare portfolios. Um, what we do is we run back tests. So this is basically the historical price of the portfolio that you see here. So even when you're comparing or when you're running it individually, it is never showing you the actual return you've got on your portfolio with the changes that you have made over the past. What is showing you is the history of historical price of this portfolio. Um, so you can analyze whether or not it's the right portfolio to continue with or not. 
Um, so in all of our analysis, we don't calculate the PNL of whatever transactions you may have done to come to this point. What we do is we take what you have today and we then look at the historical price of that portfolio in the same way that you look at the historical price of a stock or a fund. Um, the mm. performance tab here, uh, let's just click it. That line there, um, um, yeah, that blue line there. It tells you that, you know, whether, whether this portfolio has been able to beat the benchmark or whatever index you have chosen over a period of uh, last five years. And if it has done, then, you know, you can be confident about the future. Exactly, exactly. So this is the historical price of today's holdings. Um, okay. And this does not reflect what the client may have had because they may have exited some funds, entered some funds two years, three years, five years ago. That all is not considered in this. Correct. So is there any possibility? Is it is it possible to add this uh, in future? Or? Sure. So, I mean, see that the, uh, our software is much more focused on kind of front end research rather than um, the back end of, you know, um, uh, the uh, like your back office systems or your accounting systems, which give you the actual PNL of a client portfolio. So we don't really do that. Um, you mm -hmm. can obviously get your uh, real returns that your client portfolios had the XIRs, et cetera, in any back office software that um, you have subscribed to. I mean, you must have one um, anyway. Um, so, yeah. so those will give you um, the, the actual return that they've had. Uh, but on our end, what we do is we always focus on what you're holding today, what you had or did one year ago, it is not going to affect tomorrow or day after. So what we do is our research is fully focused on what, what is there today? Is it good? Should it be changed? Um, so the research is always focused on our, uh, on the platform uh, from that end. Right. With the weightages, right. Correct weightages, actual weightages. Exactly. Yeah. And how you can improve for tomorrow, basically. Right. And it considers the weights also, no? Like it, it's not the, it's not uh, equal weighted. Uh, no, 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 no. No. In fact, it, a, whatever weightages you put, it will change. The results will change if you change these weightages. Um, we also give you kind of improvement algorithms on the top there. It can give you an idea of how to. Um, you know, it, it, they are, these are just mathematical suggestions of how you can change the allocations in the list of funds that you have given to improve um, the risk and return statistics of this of this portfolio. Okay, okay. Just two more short questions. One sure. is uh, like, uh, yeah, when, when is then when you uh, showed that ISI and uh, uh, we can import uh, funds through ISI and import. Yeah. So can we uh, like will will it take a stop also? Like yes, I... yes. Yes. In fact, uh, just let's just click that for one second. You see these examples here. Just click one of the examples. Um, uh, I don't know what these items are, but basically, they the first one can be a fund, the second one can be a stock. It doesn't matter. Okay. Because why I'm asking is because sometimes you know a lot of our clients do direct stocks uh, on their own, and we yes. want to show them you know this is the volatility of your stock portfolio, and this is what you know a fund portfolio does. So yes. we can compare it with either index or maybe a portfolio, right? If we can Absolutely. the stocks thing also. Yeah. So you can have a portfolio of funds or stocks or funds and stocks in the same portfolio. And also when you run a portfolio like this, uh, the useful part here is that in asset allocation, your direct equity exposure will be put together um, I... with the underlying exposure from the mutual fund. And I... it will actually show you a breakdown as well. So... ICICI Bank or whatever. I don't know if we had that as a direct holding. I think I think it was some other stock. Bata, I think. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So you can see direct holding contribution to the exposure is four percent, and the remaining contribution to the total Bata India exposure is coming from those two funds. Yeah. This is this is a great feature. Yeah. This is actually what we were looking at. And can we upload NSDL cash as well? With the, yes. Format? Yes, so there is a tool called Statement Analyzer on the top there. Um, uh, let's just take that. It just opens in a new window. Here you can upload NSDS, CDSL, and the CAMS Carvey, the statement that comes. Um, so, and you know, once you put your password and choose the file, it will tell you if it's recognized it or not. And then you can just upload it. What it does is, this is like your kind of like a mini OneDrive inside Engine Markets. It will save the file and keep it there. Uh, and then what you can do is, load that portfolio directly from there into your uh, into the portfolio section or the client section okay okay so so i had one follow up question on this Please, uh, if i have missed it uh, earlier 
uh, yeah. the drop down was air and level uh, to check uh, the details of portfolios and and uh, aums etc yes. but if there is a direct line uh, mm -hmm. that also can be onboarded right well they, so so basically the client section lets you um, you know pull in data from various different sources so on the top you can see there are three the rta connection this will only show you the holdings that we've been able to pull from the ARNs that you've onboarded with us. Um, and we only take the latest holdings of the transaction. So here you can see. No, AR no, if there is no ARN, for example. Okay. In that case, in that case, you, you can, um, obviously manually upload it. Uh, no, in no, the I, manual I, I, I've, I've uploaded a statement, Okay, but it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, the, the client or the statement, uh, is there in this data. Through EKS, Fine. so I have done that. Yeah, yeah. But, but there is no ARN on that. It is just a portfolio. Sure. So that you will add in the manual data section where you will go to the manual data tab here and you will say add client from statement analyzer. And you will just pick that client that you've saved the file for and it will automatically get added to your list of manual data clients. So the client list okay. for the manual data section is completely separate from the RTA connection client list. It's like two different client lists, basically. Got it. Got it. Yeah. One the manual data you have to manage yourself. RTA is automatically updated from the ARN files. Sure. But the functionalities uh, of all the analytics remain uh, can be exactly the same. Exactly. The same. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. No problem. Any other questions, please let us know. Hello. Yeah, please. Yeah, I don't know about Sanjay Parival the site. Hello. Uh, just tell me that uh, we were discussing that we can create a, we can analyze the family portfolios also. If mm -hmm. they, one that if they are the clients, it's very easy. We can load yeah. multiple clients. But if mm -hmm. it's a prospect client, is it possible in that way of fashion also? Um, yeah, so basically all you have to do is add them into the manual data section. If you add two or three family members, yeah. then you can use the load multiple clients functionality to load these two, uh, two, three portfolios together. Okay. Because you can import them from the statement analyzer. If you have the um, NSDL, CDSL uh, or CAMS statements, yeah. you, you upload those statements, let's say three people in a family. So you upload those three places in the statement analyzer, you import them into the manual data section here. They will okay. then start appearing on the left hand side here. And then you can just choose the three and create a Fine. group and run analytics. It means they will show in the my client list also. It will they, yeah. So they will show in your manual data client list. Okay. But how and to you segregate can... that also that actual clients yeah. with the ARN or manual data client? Will ARN will clients will marketing? Yeah, ARN clients will only appear in the RTA connection tab, as you can see on the top there. Um, okay. So this one, I yeah, just click that, keep that away. Um, so in in the RTA connection tab on the left hand side, you will see only clients that have come from your CAMS Carvey, um, uh, you know, uh, distributor files, right? Right. Uh, so these will, you cannot change this data. This data is only changed when we get the file from the uh, auto forward. Um, the you. manual data section is your kind of your own place where you can manage it on your own manually. Okay, fine. So from manual data, we can do analysis over there. And you can do anything. Done. Yeah, you can add, delete. It is, a, it is a similar as, as, as stands for that uh, existing clients also. Yes, yes. So you is over there, you can upload anything you want. Okay, In I was doing data. one. Yeah, one thing more that I was searching some stock which is being yeah. held by some mutual funds. Right. Is it, I think that in your list, uh, there are three segregation, large, mid and small caps, mm. but is the data is complete for that? Because I was unable to find that uh, stock. Um, that so which stock were you looking at? We can check right now. One was the NDL. Okay. So here you can type uh, MDL. And for Nagpur, Delhi. Oh, NDL. 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 Nandan Dynamics. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, you'll have to maybe type in the entire name. Nandan, right? N-A-N-D-A-N. 
Nandan, there's nothing showing up. See, he, this this list will... Do you know of any fund who definitely has exposure to this stock? Because here only those stocks will appear that have come through as a mutual fund exposure. So, okay. Um, it may be a possible case of that. Uh, that no one is holding it. Yes, it. I got you. Yeah. So, any stock which has been held by that mutual funds, only these stocks will reflect over there. That's right. See, here, Nandan, we are getting some stuff. But over yeah. this is this we're not getting. So from our latest data, there is no mutual fund that has a holding in these stocks. Got you. Got you. That is why I just was a little surprised because I was able to find over there, but it was yeah. not reflecting to that side. Yeah, exactly. And so we've mentioned here that this here also you can see it says this search only contains equities that appear in mutual fund holdings. Got you. Yeah. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you. Any other questions, please let us. Okay, if there's nothing else, we can close for today. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you all for joining in. Uh, you can visit our YouTube page. So all the webinars that have been conducted up until now would be available on our YouTube play page. Uh, we have a dedicated web playlist. You can see in all the webinars that has been updated uh, up until the last Fridays, a total of 102 webinars have been updated. Thank you all for joining in. I uh, hope to see you again next week with a new topic. Thank you. Uh, and can you just tell me uh, like about the fund expert? Uh, sorry to like uh, interrupt, but actually I just saw this fund expert. I think it's a reporting software or something. No? So just wanted to know more about it. Yeah. Uh, yes, so if you have a fund expert subscription, um, what you can do is using your super ID of fund expert, you can onboard um, all the existing clients onto engine markets um, using this uh, fund expert API that they are sharing with us. Right. Um, alternatively, if you wish to subscribe to Fund Expert um, through Engine, there are uh, some uh, discounts that uh, might be running in. Uh, if you are taking in directly from Fund Expert versus if you're going with Engine, um, you can it, take it, it, uh, benefit it, it, of that. Yes, yes. No, no, no. It isn't. It isn't. They are just sharing the APIs with us. That's why we have, um, you know, uh, put this um, uh, this branding there. I mean, you can uh, onboard if you already have a Fund Expert account. Thank, yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all.